As an engineer, do you get frustrated moving between your CAD and your CAM? Well, we're here to find out about Hypermill's CAD CAM integration right into the software. My name is John Shaw. I work for OpenMind Technologies in the UK and I'm the principal application engineer. So we don't have separate CAD and CAM, it's just Hypermill and that covers both obviously the manufacturing and the, the CAD generation. So all the CAD is developed in-house by ourselves and the, the, there is no workbenches to flick between. You can be programming, drawing, simulating all at the same time. So it's just one system. This is a, a typical example of a CAD tool that would only really complement a CAM programmer. So in a conventional CAD system, there isn't a function for creating extension faces. There's obviously tools to do it, but it's not as simple as what we have in Hypermill. So there's a function called extension faces. It's, it's a one-click operation again, where you pick the face you want to machine and it will extend all the adjacent faces around it. And what sets us apart is really how we define the CAD. So if you had um, a typical extension face in a CAD system, the surface normals and the directions of the surface could be non-tangential to the original face. We untrim and extend in, in Hypermill. What that means is you can extend that face out and it doesn't affect then the tool path. You don't have a, a tool path mismatch in any way. So with the extension faces, what we found is it's well used and well known with certain CAM applications. So there's certain tool paths that go hand in hand with this, with this CAD strategy. So what we do is we actually build the CAD into the toolpath itself. So when you go to generate a toolpath, you pick the face you want to machine, these extension faces are automatically generated internally. So again, that removes any kind of manual work that you may have had to do before. Everything in Hypermill is built around safety. So from the first moment you open up a model from a customer, we're doing a lot of geometry checks. We're also doing healing. By the time the end user sometimes gets the CAD data, it could have gone through three or four translation systems and, and what you end up with is, is sometimes not ideal. So we'll try and fix everything we can in Hypermill. But then on top of that, we also have tools to really fix or recreate faces where necessary. So there's functions like global fitting where we can really pull four or five faces, collect them together and create a, effectively a, a sheet over the top of it so you're not following maybe four or five faces all the different directions maybe one of them was was slightly uh, bent in a different way so we're able to really stitch those faces together and that means the better quality you can get with the CAD obviously the better quality the toolpath and the model is going to be. I mean a lot of work has been done in the past few years in on medical um, parts and devices so what we see here is a is a knee joint femoral knee joint Traditionally, these would be ball nose scanned, um, and that obviously takes quite a long time to, to manufacture. So we use conical barrel tools for this with a fire axis machine, but this is impossible unless you have good quality data underneath. Um, so normally you would find with a knee joint, it would look a little bit like a, a patchwork quilt. There'd be four, five, six faces in there, all different surface directions. So we utilize global fitting so it's a GSM function in, in Hypermill to really pick the faces and create a really clean sheet underneath, which we can then generate the toolpath off. By doing this, we can get the perfect result on these kind of strategies. A lot of the really useful CAD tools that we have in Hypermill are inside the actual toolpaths as well. So we spoke before about how the milling extension faces is in a, in a 3D finishing toolpath but you also have extension faces available in a lot of the five axis toolpaths as well. When we're doing trimming, especially um, around poor quality, which is which we all deal with, we're really using the side of the cutter to trim. So that relies on a very nice, clean uh, surface. Otherwise, you know, that's the surface moves, the tool's gonna move with it, which obviously cause, causes bad quality surface finish. So we have tools specifically for trimming applications where it will internally regenerate a, a, we call it a swarf stripe around the geometry and we're then we're calculating against the original model because we don't want to interfere with that. But the tool path is driven by this self-generated clean swarf curve and get the best result then. With Hypermill, 
The CAD tools are so powerful, it makes everything so much easier, and it's the reason why we're able to get such perfect results every time.